Hi all, uh, welcome once again to uh, the third chapter of our Wind Power Technology class. You know, um, uh, for, for this third chapter, we are basically going to look at wind turbine system technology. Uh, and it is suspected that uh, at the end of this lecture, uh, you'll be able to uh, accomplish some of the objectives that have been set out in the third chapter of your lecture notes. Uh, now, presentation overview. In this particular presentation, we are going to look at uh, some things uh, that include uh, the aerodynamics, you know, of wind turbine blades. We are going to look at some types of wind turbines. We are also going to look at some technical performance characteristics of wind turbines, and then we are also going to look at some uh, classifications of wind turbines and then finally we are going to end with the main parts of, uh, of the general or some wind turbines, you know, the general parts of, of them. You know. So the aerodynamics of wind turbine blades, uh, based on a principle by which each wind turbine works or the different types of wind turbines work, uh, each one of them works aerodynamically, you know, uh, uh, and the, the principles are based on two main uh, principles, the drag and the lift principles, you know. Uh, the drag principle basically is um, the instance where the wind pushes against the blade and the blade moves in the direction, you know, of the wind, you know, or the direction in which the force was applied. And the lift device uh, is an instance where the wind forces the blade to move in a direction that is perpendicular to that of the wind or the force moving the blades. Uh, these are pretty, pretty very simple principles, you know, and detailed explanations of uh, these principles are given in the lecture material. And so we move on to some types of wind turbines. Uh, there are two general types of wind turbines. We have uh, the horizontal axis wind turbines and then the vertical axis wind turbines. Now the horizontal axis wind turbine, uh, you know, is a is a is a is a category of wind turbines that have the axis of rotation of the shaft of the blade in the horizontal plane. So you have the blade rotating, and the shaft that uh, rotates the blade, the axis of that shaft particularly lies in the horizontal plane. And uh, in the, on this page, I've given some some clear demonstrations, you know, so you can have some turbines, you know, with just one blade, that is two, three, four, and some, etc. Uh, now, horizontal axis wind turbines, uh, you know, have their own advantages. They have a high efficiency, since the blade always moves with an equal to the wind, receiving power through the whole rotation. So, at any point, you know, within the rotation, the blade still receives power from the wind, you know. So, it makes, it makes, it makes them suitable for, for very high energy capture, you know. This is the high efficiency. And then uh, a tall tower base allows access to stronger winds. You know, by now, some of you may know that uh, uh, as we move higher up uh, above the ground level, the wind speed improves. You know? So uh, taller towers means that the turbines have access to winds far above the ground, which means uh, they have access to much stronger winds. You know? So they have the potential to produce much more energy than their counterparts that are much lower. Now, these are some disadvantages also of uh, horizontal axis wind turbines. Uh, uh, for especially for the big, very big ones, the tall tower and blades are very difficult to transport. You know, you need special transportation to transport them. You know, especially the large ones, the 2 megawatts, 3 megawatts, and all that. They're quite huge, huge in size. Uh, now, because of their size, too, they are very difficult to install. You know, so during a typical installation, they need much more tall and like uh, tall cranes and very very expensive uh, uh, cranes. You know, and then they also need people who are very skillful. You know, to actually do the installation because uh, the the sizes or the masses that we are talking about are quite massive. You know, so that is it. And then the third one, they require additional yaw control mechanism to turn the blades toward the wind. Uh, this is because uh, some of you may know or you may all know that um, 
the wind the wind varies the direction of the wind varies continuously you know so the wind doesn't actually blow specifically for one direction all the time it varies so uh, in order to orient orient this wind turbine towards the wind to capture the energy from the wind you know there's a the need for some control mechanism to actually point the turbine at the wind at all times so that when the wind direction for instance changes to let's say from the to the north direction uh, this control mechanism turn uh, the blades to face the north direction so they can capture the wind and much the same way if uh, the wind changes from the north to let's say the south start blowing from the south these same control mechanisms also tilt uh, the turbine towards the south to capture the wind uh, this control mechanism uh, must emphasize here uh, are much more common with very huge, uh, uh, with the very big turbines. Uh, the 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 very small ones normally do not really have any complicated control mechanism for it, and but instead they have just a vein at the end of the tail, you know, just to orient the turbine to the direction of the wind at all times. I move on to vertical axis wind turbines. Uh, uh, vertical axis wind turbine, as the name imply, have the, the the axis of rotation of the shaft, the blade shaft, in the vertical plane. You know, and I've given some some demonstrations here. You can see them. Uh, these diagrams here are all uh, typical examples of vertical axis wind turbine. This first type is called the Darius type of wind turbine. Uh, it, it's quite huge. The base here, you know, could be equivalent to to a building. You know, so it's quite huge. And this one too, we have four vertical axis wind turbines arranged, you know, on a platform. You know, these ones are called the Savonius type of wind turbines, and then there's a Jeromil type, you know, of wind turbine. You know, so these are these are some of them. There are other different types of models that have been designed and perfected over the time. Different different ones. I'm sure when you get online and you run a search for vertical axis wind turbines, you can see different variations in designs and all that. But the basic principle is the same. They all have uh, the axis uh, of the shaft, you know, carrying the blade, the, the axis lying in the vertical plane. Uh, I think now uh, none of you have any problem with uh, the vertical and the horizontal. They're quite straightforward. Uh, so these are some advantages of vertical axis wind turbines. They're only directional. You know, they don't need to be point. They don't. The very good designs don't really need to be pointed into the wind. You know, they can actually capture the wind from all directions. You know, so they can be located also near the ground, making it easier to maintain moving parts. You know, since uh, the small ones could be, could be could be could be located near the ground, access access much easier as compared to the counterpart, the horizontal axis wind turbines that have that can actually go deep deep high into the sky. Uh, and because they can be uh, mounted closer to the ground, they can also be built at locations where taller structures are prohibited. Now, some disadvantages. Uh, this is the nature of the operation of uh, typical vector, vertical axis wind turbine. They produce you know, cyclic stresses on the tower, which contributes to poor reliability. So, they are prone to failure, if not designed very well. <laughs> they, they usually do not also have access to stronger winds because they are usually installed close to the ground. Uh, I come back to also the, the same concept of wind shear, where you know that uh, uh, the wind speed gradually increases from the ground level, you know, up into the sky. So a wind turbine located closer to the ground cannot really capture the much stronger winds high above, you know. So this this is one limitation of vertical axis wind turbines. And then uh, the very big types, you know, usually require an electric motor to get them started before the wind can naturally take over the movement of the turbine. So these are some, some disadvantages. There are a lot more of this uh, that you can find in literature or in books and all that. But these are the basics. So we'll now move on to some uh, technical performance characteristics of wind turbines. Uh, uh, the first characteristic I would like to describe here is the power curve. The power curve basically gives uh, the relationship between uh, the wind speed and then the power that a turbine will produce, you know. So at different speeds, the turbine produces a uh, different, different amount of power. 
you know, and this particular power curve is a, is a characteristic, you know, of, of the wind turbine. It's mostly uh, provided by, by the designer or the manufacturer of the wind turbine. So uh, it helps you know that if the wind is blowing at so much speed, you know, the wind turbine produces so much power. A typical example, if you look at this figure shown on this slide here, we can see that uh, at, when the wind is blowing at, let's say, 5 meters per second, you have uh, the turbine producing about uh, 50 kilowatts of power. You know, as the wind you know, increases to about 10 meters per second, you have the turbine producing about 550 kilowatts. You know, and I think the maximum power that a turbine produces is about 15 meters per second. You know, that is about 650 you know, kilowatts. So uh, it tells us that this particular turbine, you know, starts producing power somewhere from this speed, let's say about 3.5 to 4 meters per second. And the maximum that they can, they can, they can, the maximum power that it can generate is, is, is indicated by, by, the, by the flat end here of the curve, which is about 650 kilowatts. This, this is pretty, pretty simple, you know. So it produces that up to about 25 meters per second, where the, it doesn't produce any power beyond. And now, we also have some other characteristics, the power rating of the turbine. That is the maximum power generating capacity of the turbine. So from the figure that we looked at uh, before, you could see that the maximum power that could be generated by this particular turbine is, uh, is 650 kilowatts. So the power rating, you know, could be termed to be 650 kilowatts. But that's the maximum power generating capacity of the turbine. And have different turbines, you know, some generating up to about 2 megawatts, that's 2,000 kilowatts. You can have 2.5 megawatts. You can have 3 megawatts. Some even go higher up now to about, uh, an aircon has about 7.5 megawatts. One, just one turbine producing 7,500 kilowatts. You know, it's quite, quite huge. And those turbines are, are mostly used for offshore, offshore purposes for, uh, for, for, for generating power from the wind offshore. Uh, so that is the power rating of the turbine. We have the startup wind speed. You know, the startup wind speed is the wind speed up to 10 unloaded rotor. You know, that is when when a wind turbine is not connected to any load. You know that uh, the wind speed that will cause the turbine blades to start to rotating. That is the startup wind speed. And then we also have the cutting wind speed, which is the minimum wind speed at which power is generated. You know, from a wind turbine. So if I go back to the power curve diagram, you can know that the cutting wind speed is about 3.5 to about 4 meters per second here. That is the speed, uh, the wind speed at which the turbine begins to generate power. You know, so that is the cutting wind speed of that, the minimum wind speed at which power is generated by a the turbine. Then uh, we also have the rated wind speed. It is the wind speed at which the wind turbine is designed to run to produce rated power. In the figure, the, or the power curve figure, uh, you could all notice that uh, the 650 kilowatts was generated around, they started generating around uh, 15 meters per second uh, wind speed. So in this case, it could be, it could be termed that uh, the, the, the rated wind speed of the turbine is 15 meters per second because it is the wind speed at which uh, the wind turbine will produce the rated power. And then the rated power is the maximum power capacity of the turbine. So we have the cutout wind speed, which is the wind speed at which the wind turbine is programmed to stop in order to prevent damage. The damage could be damage to the electronic components within the wind turbine, damage to, to the shaft or something, you know. So uh, this, this, all these are programmed, you know, and built into the control, wind turbine control system. So when the wind speed gets to the cutout wind speed, then uh, uh, certain functions are activated to, to make sure they bring the wind turbine to a halt, so they reduce the speed of the wind turbine in order not to cause damage. There have been quite some, some number of accidents, you know, and all that, which are... Uh, and then we have the maximum design wind speed, which is a wind speed above which damage, physical damage, could occur to the wind turbine. Physical damage uh, could imply the, the, the wind turbine flying off its foundations, you know, the blades of the wind turbine breaking apart, and all that. Uh, most of you, when you, when you have time to visit uh, YouTube, you know, you run a search for wind turbine accident and all that. You you see quite some some very interesting videos. You know, of wind 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 turbine blades flying up into the sky. Very massive 
massive blades, you know, some blade length up to about 20 meters, you know, 40 meters flying up, you know. You know, so, so it's very important, you know, that uh, uh, wind turbines are actually designed, you know, with a very high maximum design wind speed. So they can actually withstand you know, much higher wind speed without, without really causing, causing any damage, you know, or, or breaking apart. Now, we move on to classifications of wind turbines. This is a pretty simple table. You know, wind turbines are classified generally from a micro wind turbines to a large wind turbine. You know, and micro wind turbines are those wind turbines uh, with a rated power less than one kilowatt. And the large turbines, you know, uh, they have rated power, you know, greater than 500 kilowatts. You know, the rest are in the middle. The mini turbines, midi turbines, and the small wind turbines, they are all there. You know, they have equivalent weights, the you know, rotor diameter, you know, and then the half height of the turbine, they are all here. The table is, is pretty pretty simple to, to, to understand, you know, so, uh, so we move on to the main parts, you know, the wind turbines. Uh, this is uh, one, one schematic of a typical horizontal axis wind turbine. And then, now from this diagram, you can have this circle, you know, the circle described by the blades when they're in motion, you know. The area of this circle is, is, uh, is termed the swept swept area of the blades, you know, and the diameter of this circle, this virtual circle, is a, is, is a rotor diameter, you know. Now, when we look at uh, the diagram also on the right-hand side here, you can see the half height being the distance from the ground level to the middle portion, you know, of the rotor. So, the distance from the middle portion of the rotor to the ground is the half height of the particular turbine. And at the back here, we have something that we call a cell. you know, the nacelle it's what houses most of the uh, components that, that cause the wind turbine to function, you know, like the electrical generator, you know, the mechanisms in there, you know, the control systems and all that are housed here in the nacelle. You know. And if you have the tower, the main supporting structure of the nacelle, the rotor and all that, you know. So uh, uh, this, 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 this is one schematic of a typical wind turbine, you know, and then... Uh, and there's also another schematic here, you know, where uh, we, we, we take a closer look, you know, about the inside of, of the nacelle. Uh, and then the, the components are pretty here, you know, you have the hub, you know, and you, there's a wind direction, you have the blade here. There's a brake here, you know, the brake is activated by the control systems, you know, for controlling the speed at which the wind turbine is rotating, especially when we're getting closer to the cutout wind speed or the maximum design wind speed, you know, the brakes are activated to actually slow down uh, prematurely or, or, or artificially slow down the, the movement of the wind turbine blades in order not to cause uh, any failure of components, you know. And normally, we have wind turbines having a gearbox here, you know, to actually cause an increase in speed, you know. And this speed increase is also fed into the electrical generator through another shaft. And as the output of the generator that we have the electricity, you know, uh, being generated. And you have a yard drive here. This yard drive, you know, is what changes the orientation of the, of the turbine, you know, that causes the wind turbine to face the direction of the wind. And the direction of the wind at all times is measured by the wind vane at the tail end here. And the speed of the wind is measured by the anemometer. So these the anemometer and the wind vane here serve as input into the control systems, you know, of the wind turbine, and they help the wind turbine to make certain critical decisions, you know, when it comes to uh, not exceeding exceeding uh, parameters. The de it's uh, it's the turbine design parameters. So uh, these are these are some 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 components, you know, uh, some general components. Some specific wind turbines might have different components from this, but these are the general general. Uh, components of this particular wind turbine. Of course, you can also have some wind turbines without a gearbox that uh, the drive feeds directly into the generator. Call them GLS wind turbines. They're all available. So, um, uh, this uh, brings us to the end of Chapter 3. Uh, uh, thank you all for your attention and uh, have, have, have a wonderful time. Uh, thank you.